Professor. I'm here today with Anthony Justin, a brilliant inventor who is 17 years old. Mm -hmm. And I often talk about the inventors that are sometimes uh, put into like this, this pigeonhole into people thinking that they have to fit this perfect mold, like be a certain age or have a certain education or technical background. And the reality is that's, that's the furthest thing from the truth. And Anthony is living proof of that uh, and following in the footsteps of other uh, great inventors that didn't fit the perfect mold, like the Wright brothers, uh, Thomas Edison. And I think it's fascinating when you see somebody this young and the ideas he has, uh, a lot of people are surprised because they think the patent office has an age requirement, but the patent office doesn't. In fact, George Neeson is the inventor of the trampoline, which was invented when he was 16 years old. Frank Epperson invented the popsicle at 11. Chester Greenwood is the 15-year-old inventor of earmuffs. And if you're thinking that these are all simple consumer-type items and that a young person cannot invent something sophisticated, the inventor of the helicopter, uh, Igor Sikorsky, when he came up with the idea, was 11 years old. And it was, uh, he was 12 when he uh, developed the first prototype. So Anthony, you're, in, you're definitely in, in uh, good company there. Let's start first with the problem. What, what problem did you find that you're trying to address with your idea? And we'll get to your models uh, later on as well. A while ago, I was at uh, Costco's or uh, other uh, supermarkets, and uh, I just got tired of waiting in lines. The way that I did this was I, I just started uh, imagining stuff and and I thought somebody had it already because uh, I, I was telling my father and my mother that uh, uh, when when we walked there, I said, uh, why isn't there something where you simply just go uh, just three steps, just instantly, just three, two, one, and then uh, you instantly just pay out normally. And um, my dad was like, oh, wow, that, that's a brilliant idea and that they don't have that. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. So, so for our, our viewers who are like joining for the first time, like the Anthony's idea is an intelligent shopping cart. And it's a system of shopping where, as he said, it was triggered by him himself being at Costco and being frustrated by the long lines. So, there, and so he was thinking like a lot of inventors, there's got to be a better way. And that's where this concept of this, yep. this shopping cart that's smart, essentially that it, it reads the prices and it oh uh, well it's it's the whole thing the main the main thing mm -hmm. is is model one and the cash out so okay. one thing uh anthony that's unusual about your idea is you have a three second process for your uh for your system so tell us about that and how it works all right so with my midi model i made um so you guys would understand this is a regular uh person that shops uh he simply grabs his cart and he goes through each step the first step would be three and then two, and then one. And once he's done, simply walks here, pays, grabs his stuff, and leaves. <laughs> so in those three seconds, it scans every single item in his, in his cart. Tell me first, like going back to, we started today with the age of, of inventors in the past, and being 17 years old, what advice would you have for young inventors that are looking at, uh, at bringing an idea to market? Um, Chase your dreams, uh, work very hard, focus on it. Um, I will be honest, it is not easy. There are gonna be a lot of nights that's gonna feel like it's never gonna happen. Um, that's how I feel at times, but uh, it'll be worth it in the end. I honestly uh, didn't even think I would be here in Miami <laughs> uh, for my projects. Uh, last year we were here, but for, uh, for my parents and stuff, and I was just dreaming about my stuff. I was just making it too. And uh, all of a sudden I come back and I actually have my projects and stuff and going on uh, interviews. Yeah, and how does it feel? Your your idea is now patent pending, which means you can describe it. Oh, it, it, it feels amazing, to be honest, it really does. A lot of people were telling me I wouldn't even, even get a patent on this. They told me that there's a lot of this stuff was not makeable. What's next for you on this journey and, and what do you hope the end goal would be from, from your idea? I hope to see this in stores. I honestly, I, I, I can't wait. Uh, I've, I've been <laughs> dreaming and dying about this almost every single day and um, I, I've seen people struggle and stuff uh, with the lines or I've seen some people uh, uh, struggle with paying. So this way it's completely, you know, we, they talk about going to a cashless society but this is going to be where you could go into a store and just walk in, walk out, your, your card scanned and your totals given, you simply just go up, pay, You just pay and, and go. Oh, also, uh, with my card idea, I, um, I, I have it 
uh, on my pattern as well, is that um, I, I, I got very tired on uh, lifting waters inside my car, well, inside my dad's car, and um, doing a lot of uh, labor work. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. I, I, I didn't like it. So I, I invented where uh, there are rollers inside of the cart where uh, um, there's also a joystick or a button that you can push that it lifts that it lifts this part it lifts up you. to your um, uh, it's like a ramp so it lifts up to your car level and you simply slide everything in okay um, uh, uh, heavy waters you don't have to lift anymore it simply just just level it up to your car and just push everything in and it would work every once in a while and you know if you have like a watermelon or something like that it's mm -hmm. you know it's it's hard but this would work for even irregular shaped oh, items um, like that uh, anything that's in the stores it, it would work Okay, so we know, Anthony, that self-checkout has been around for a long time. You can go to Walmart and self-checkout, Home Depot, Publix, a lot of places have that. Uh, tell us what makes yours an advantage over self-checkout and what makes it better than anything else that's out there. Uh, well, with the self-checkout, you actually have to physically scan each item, and with mine, you don't. You just simply walk through it. Okay, and is there an advantage as far as... Uh, oh, um... Uh, what makes mine different to other cashier lists? Yeah, well, that's that's a huge difference. But as far as is it better for preventing theft than oh yes yes uh, uh, mine uh, it's instantly scanned. So um, let's say if someone tries to steal it, um, they they would rip off the tag and there would be a uh, UAV ink that uh, you can see, uh, but the machine will detect it. Uh, that is orange stage on my uh, on my uh, presentation that I made. Mm -hmm. Uh, you simply walk through, and it the whole system itself turns orange, and it and it starts blinking, and it and it needs help. So and so right now just, there's no mm -hmm. self checkout. It, no, nope. there's, there's no way to avoid that, right? So no, there's probably no. shoplifting <laughs> happening all the time. <laughs> so it's uh, honestly it's uh, very easy to shoplift at uh, uh, at stores. <laughs> you can easily uh, put it inside your jacket or just walk through, and no one notices. But not with this, because if the cart has the item on there and it goes through, it picks it up, and if they remove the tag, it, it, it identifies that as well. Show us what your initial drawings look like. This is... Uh, that's where it all one. started. Yep, that's where it all started. And then I had to think of a way how it works, so I drew the original um, uh, Bluetooth and see how it worked. And then as more time passed, I made this. Well, this that's when front. it really starts coming yep, together. Uh -huh, yep. right. Let's look now at the final CAD drawings that we prepared, the ones that are actually with your patent. Look at that. Actually, your last drawings are really captured the, the concept pretty well. And all we did as part of the patent is uh, put them on CAD, and then a patent, every single element has to have uh, an element number and then described in the text, which is where we worked with Anthony to make sure that description is accurate. Anthony, in addition to this miniature model, I understand you also have a much larger model that you spent time putting together. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, let's go take All a right. look. Anthony, this is, uh, this is it. This is your rough, what we call in the, the patenting industry, the rough prototype. Yep, the first, this is one. <laughs> uh, so tell us a little bit about what each part is and how it works and how it comes together. All right, well, this right here is uh, my flush strips. This is model one that I built. This is uh, my uh, shopping cart that I built. Uh, I did not build the full of it, but I just built the top. Also, uh, this is my uh, uh, cash out that I made. This is essentially the register. Yes, you uh, grab your cart or you can go without your cart. You walk through each step, so three, two, one, and each each uh, section that was was collected, it will go on to the cash out. And you simply pay and leave. So that's the three second process. Yep, three second process. Amazing. Thank you, Anthony, for uh, taking the time to, to come down here. I know it was a long drive, but also figuratively a long journey to get from when you first had the idea to where you are now. So you're an inspiration to a lot of inventors. Thank you, sir, it was worth it. Yeah, thank you. Yep. <laughs>